Transfer the video there. I'm going to try to do that now. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And then what I'm going to do is you go to your anywhere in this building that you can um, find a thumb drive. Yes, sir. And I'll give it to you. This way, this this will stay. That's fine. Now, you said you received some. So let's let's start from the beginning. Okay. What made you contact us? Here? Um. was told by a friend. And who's that friend? Linda Roberts. When did you when did you see her? Yesterday. Yesterday. How long have you known her? Uh, since I believe it was maybe September of last year. What's your relationship with her? Friends. Friends? Any intimate relationship? There was. Okay. I want you to be. See, the thing is, is I want you to be very honest with mm -hmm. me. Um, okay. Okay. So, just tell me what, what, per, what happened. What transcribe uh, with this? With which part? With this whole yesterday's. How did you? How did you meet her? I met her sister first. Okay. Her name is Mary Beth Tomaselli. Okay. When did you meet her? September. September. I think it was, or it would have been uh, late August, I think. I could actually tell you, but I don't really know the date. Okay, but was it of 2018? Yes, it was, I believe it was August to September, somewhere in there. Okay, where did you guys meet at? Uh, we met through Facebook. What, uh, do you have our Facebook? Yeah, not anymore. Okay. And this is Mary, Mary Beth. Mm -hmm. So how did you guys meet through Facebook? What? Just talking to each other. She was um, interested in, I'm a musician. She was mm -hmm. interested in the shows that I play. She eventually came out to one of those shows. What kind of musician are you? I play guitar, I play cover tunes in, in and around the Tampa Bay area. Okay. So she comes out um, in September. Was that with Linda or was no, that? No, it was alone. Did you have an intimate relationship with her too? I did. Okay. All right. So tell me about, so then, so you guys, so you met her, she comes out, and then uh, does she we, we just kind of hooked up a few times at her place. Okay. She brought her sister to one of the gigs when her sister got back in town from North Carolina. This is Linda. I met Linda. Linda was, um, Linda was with she, she was with her okay. at one of my shows and um, somehow obtained my number from her sister and started texting me and asked me to come over to help her with something at their apartment and seduced me and so we had an intimate relationship for a little bit. So when was that that she reached out to you? To soon, soon, soon thereafter when I met her. I, I don't have the date exact but I can backtrack and get you those dates. Okay. So we're talking back in the beginning, probably about September, August, you guys meet. Um, 
September for her, for sure, September. Yeah. So you start talking, and where do you guys go? Which house? Uh, they have a house they own, they rent together in um, Palm Harbor. It's in, um, I don't know the subdivision, but I gave you the address right. when I called you. Okay. So you guys go over there? We've just, been there. Okay. Yes, that's about all where we've been. Okay. So how long do you, do you still have this relationship with uh, neither the sister? Neither one. Okay. So you had an intimate relation. How long did that last? Just uh, a couple occasions with the sister Mary Beth, and then uh, more with Linda. But uh, came pretty much came to an end. So when did it come to an end? Uh, off and on, the end was sort of about a month ago. About, uh, yeah, about a month ago. Do both parties know? Yeah, okay. about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you guys ended up? Did you guys get into an altercation of no. some to the fight, or just no, she who just ended it? She just got on my nerves, texting me and stuff too much. I ended up blocking her on Facebook and phone, and she got another account. She started contacting me again, and I felt sorry for her in a lot of different ways. So I talked to her a little bit more. But that's. I know you want as much as you can right. get, but that, that's sort of the least of it, how, okay. we, how we came together. So then what happened yesterday? How did you guys meet up yesterday? How did that come about? She asked me to come over, said so <coughs> she needed to talk about something. She called me. Me and Linda? Yeah. Okay. What time did she call you yesterday? Uh, I can't remember, but it was, it was um, sometime in the, I believe it was like in the early, early afternoon, let me see. Um, if I can find out. Text. I just like to know. I like, I'm sorry, I go, it's I like to get a history. I mean, as much know. as I can. Well, that, that, that history, mm -hmm. it is what it is. I mean, that's, I mean, without getting real detail, there was into a relationship with both her and her sister. The one with the sister, the one with Mary Beth ended pretty quickly and then that one started and then um, it went on for longer through October, November, December and pretty much not not too much through January and then And where's her husband up north? Yeah. He, he lives in I believe it's North Carolina. I don't know where. Okay. I'm just trying to find this here. Which today is Wednesday, right? Today is Wednesday, yes sir, the uh, 13th. Okay, so it looks like it was, um, she got a hold of me around 10, 10.30 a.m. yesterday. I was over there at some time around um, Sometime between then and noon, I believe it was maybe close to noon. And when she texted you, what did she say? She just wanted you to? Uh, she just texted me a bunch of, just, um, you know, uh, your selfish type, just weird things. And then she said she wanted to talk to me. And then um, she called me and told me to come over. Um, she called me on my phone and told me to come over. And I believe it was around noon that I was over there. So you went to her house around noon? Sometime around noon, yeah. And then, and what, uh, what ended up, uh, so you guys, so you get there around noon, mm -hmm. okay. She, she starts um, into a conversation, um, and uh, she wanted to tell me why she acts so, Nutty, for lack of a better word. Okay. Okay. She goes back and forth. She vacillates a lot. She curses me out, and she begs me to come talk to her. Um, that's been going on from the beginning. And, uh, uh, she takes Ambien at night, and she mixes it with alcohol, she says. I don't know. She, she denied that after she said that. She said that in the beginning of the relationship. She mm -hmm. said she takes Ambien, and she's sorry, and sometimes if she has a drink. So I, I really shouldn't say that. I can't. I can't assume that she mixes Ambien with alcohol. Yeah, but she told you that. She you did, didn't see it, but she. she I didn't see it. She oh. said, "I'm sorry. I took my Ambien, and I, I think I also had a drink." 
And I was like, well, that makes sense why you're drunk dialing me and saying crazy things. And right. Stuff like that. So I pretty much ignore her when she gets like that. I wait a few days and then she texts or calls and says something nice. So she wanted to talk to me. I, I got there because I had been ignoring her. She went on a cruise for a week and she just got back last Tuesday. Or I'm sorry, last uh, Sunday. So a week ago, not this this Sunday, the week before that, she just got back from a cruise. As soon as she hit the port, she started calling me. She she had Wi-Fi on the cruise and texted me, texted me, texted me. Uh, during the cruise? During the cruise. Okay. I, I ignored it all. And then when she got back, she said, I'm back, I don't want to talk to you. And I ignored it, ignored it. So uh, so like a week went by, and then she this happened yesterday. She said, please, I want to talk to you. I have to tell you something very important about why this is happening, why I'm this way. I know I've said things and done things that have upset you and uh, she asked me to come over to talk in person i did i went over and then she started telling me you don't understand what happened to me in my lifetime and why i'm this way why i'm so messed up okay so so you walk in where do you guys go where do you guys go in the living room Mm -hmm. okay did you guys have so then so you sit down and she proceeds to tell you this What, what else does she tell you um well what she started to say was, "You don't understand what happened to me in my in with my um in my past and why I'm so messed up." And um, she said it has to do with my father. And I said, "Wow, that sounds pretty bad." Of course, I was assuming something completely different. Mm-hmm. And I said, "I I know. I know people. I've I've talked to people. I've." Ex- you know, I, I know I have a little bit of experience in people that are messed up because of their parents. You can tell me if that's what you want to tell me. She said, I've never told anyone. Nobody knows. And I said, well, these kind of secrets will, um, there she is. I'm just disappointed right now. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. You could call her back. We'll later. call her back. We'll just, call her back later. We'll call her back. Yeah, we're, we're, we'll let you talk to her. The only thing is, she's 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 on her way back. She expects to meet me. Okay. Just hold on. No. Um, no. No. Just let it go. Just, we'll, yeah, we'll just. Then you can call. You call her back. It's totally. It's, it's no it's problem. Fine. Okay. I just don't want to break up her. What's yes. going on here? Okay. That's all. You got it. So, um, she. Um, I I assume that I'm helping her divulge something that happened to her as a child that right. she had repressed and uh, I do I do like her she's a, she's a nice lady in a lot of ways and um, so I felt bad that what she was about to tell me I thought mm-hmm. and she says you don't understand I've never told one soul nobody knows I've never told anybody the only person that knows is my sister she knows I said oh geez it, this is going on with her as well I said tell me she said it's not nothing sexual that's what you're thinking. I was like, that's what I was thinking. You're you're damaged from sexual abuse as a child. She said, no. I said, then what is it? And um, she said, uh, I ended my father's life. Okay. Is that what she exactly said? Exactly. Okay. And then what did she say? How did it? And then when she said that, did she? What did you do? I was shocked, and then she said, actually, we ended my father's life, me and my sister. And I said, how did you do this? I thought you told me a story when I first met you of how your father died, and you happened upon his lifeless body, and your sister called 911 and you started chest compressions. She's in the medical profession, so Mm -hmm. I assume she knows CPR. Maybe most people know, I don't know. But anyway, she told me she started chest compressions, and when the paramedics got there, see, I wouldn't know any of this stuff. I'm Mm -hmm. sure you can corroborate it, because the paramedics might tell you. This is what she said. Paramedics got there and had to pull her off, saying, ma'am, he's dead. He was, he was, dead and gone and blue or whatever and I don't know um, I said that's the story you told me uh, you're so if you ended this life why were you doing chest compressions until the emergency responders got there I said was that for 
books. I was ch it was chilling to me. Okay. I started my phone video at that point. Okay. I only missed a couple words after she said I ended my father's life. I started my video camera, I looked down like I was looking at a text and I started the video and I put the video like this. Mm -hmm. And I was videotaping her on her sofa. And I think I had to repeat one thing that I had missed that I thought was important. It was about how she started the process of ending her father's life. So she said, um, we got past the whole, why did you lie to me about giving him chest compressions? And if you knew he was dead, and she made that a big deal. That she, she tried to make me believe that was her trauma in her life, that she found her dead father as the most important person in the world to her and had to do chest compressions. She's like, I did chest compressions for 30 minutes on my dead father. And that's what has messed me up. I mean, he was my, my idol, my prime choice. So, so I was a little bit chagrined that she had lied to me and, and I was also shocked that someone was telling me they murdered somebody. Mm -hmm. So I was like, so that's how the conversation started. Why are you telling me this when you told me you tried to save him? Mm -hmm. And then I knew right away that this was something I, I, might, I might record because I, I never heard somebody tell me they killed somebody before, so I start. I did. I don't know. I started the recorder. Whether it was something I am allowed to do or not, I don't know. I did it. First mm -hmm. up, this is inside her residence. Yeah. Still so, okay. Mm -hmm. She uh, she proceeded to tell a story. I, like I said, I missed one thing. She, I said, "How did you do it?" She goes, "I don't really want to talk about the details." And I said, "Why would you want to talk? You fit, you've gone this far." She said, if, if you tell anybody, I could go to jail. I said, no, you could, you, you could get lethal injection in Florida. I think they still do it. I don't know. Right. And, and I said, but you've already gone this far. You might as well. I said, the truth will set you free. And she said, if you, okay, if you want to hear it, I'll tell you. I started the recorder. She had said, we gave him a drink with seven, she said six at first something called Halcyon. I don't even know what that is. I, Halcyon, and later she told me it was a sleeping pill. I've never, okay. I've never heard of it. Okay. Uh, I'm, again, these things could probably be corroborated because when they did an autopsy, they probably found Halcyon. He's cremated. Mm -hmm. So she said, oh, right before I started the camera, she said, he's cremated, so there's no evidence. Um, I can't get in trouble. She said, if you tell somebody... At first, she said, "If you tell somebody, I could go to jail." And I said, "No, you can get the you can you can get the death penalty for killing somebody." She goes, "Well, he's gone. He's cremated. There's no evidence, and they've already done an investigation." Mm -hmm. That's what she said. That's when I started the camera. She said she started to say how she first administered Halcyon, um, and then I started the camera, and I, and then so the video starts from there. I said, "So what is this about six Halcyon?" She said, "I." They're strong sleeping pills, as strong as you can get. I had my sister make up a drink. She said, um, "She said, go make up a drink because he has a drink at night every every night." She said, "Vodka, a vodka drink." That was probably in the system too. Um, I never met this man. Obviously, mm -hmm. I mean, this is supposedly four years ago. I just met them not even a year ago. Um, so she said the sister made up a drink with um, a full drink, like a, instead of a shot of vodka, which he would have been happy with. I think she made like a, a vodka and, and tonic or something. She said she put soda in it and everything, and it was like a full-size drink. She actually, on the video, you can see her, she said she made a full-size drink and put the pills in it. Meaning the sister did. Mm -hmm. Now, who's the nurse? Lid is the nurse or the Lid sister? Is the nurse. Lid is the nurse. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not both of them, obviously. Okay. I am a little bit confused as to whether she made the drink, handed it to Linda, Linda put the Halcyon in it, or she told her to go make the drink, put the Halcyon in it to dissolve. I don't really know. It, I Honestly, I haven't even reviewed the tape since I made it. Okay. It's, it's, it's chilling. Mm -hmm. It's okay. chilling. So what else she ends up? She said she gave, she, she was like, why would you make a full drink? So he, he's, he might, you know, he's not going to finish it, and then he won't be, um, you know, as, as a, it's not as toxic to dilute it in a full drink. She was, she definitely just told me that she, um, you know, was was um, 
upset with the sister for making a bigger drink. He took a couple swigs, she says, swigs of it, and not enough to get all that halcyon into his system, but enough to knock him, she said, I think she said for a loop, knock him for a loop. Mind you, she said he was having trouble breathing. He had got, he had diagnosis in a recent phone call that maybe she received about his state of being, his prognosis was that he had a mass on his lungs, so big that there was no saving him. He had had cancer, lung cancer, I think she said. It's on there. But this recent turn of events was, you know, it was proving that he was not going to live, according to her. And that she, you know, she interjected a lot of her own thoughts during this conversation, saying that I've been in the medical profession, I know that when I see a mass like that, he can't live long. And she said maybe two months. I was doing my own interjecting along the way, saying like two months, what about if it's four months? Like how do you say when it's okay to stop somebody from breathing, you don't say that, you murdered your father. And she said, do you have to say it like that? I was like, yeah, I have to say it like that. She said, we euthanized him. I said, euthanasia is illegal. She said, no, it's not. She got angry. She said, I watch hospice administer fatal doses of morphine to people all the time, just a little extra, so they can go away. And nobody questions it, because they're dying anyway. And so when they do finally die, people are like, well, this one died too. They're in hospice. She said, and she actually said, I've done it myself, administered the fatal dose of morphine. I was like, thinking to myself, this is getting crazier and crazier. Because people in hospice, or her father, they have rights. You can't decide when that happens. We just, that's not what we do in this society. We don't decide when people stop breathing. We don't do it. So she said, after the drink, they watched him, and they waited, and they thought he was dead. She said he, she said he urinated on himself. That might be something that was found, I guess, when they finally got a hold of him. Paramedics, that might be a normal thing that happens. I don't even know. She said, we thought he was dead. He urinated on himself, and he wasn't breathing. We couldn't detect any breath. She said, I may be leaving out some stuff in the middle, but I'm getting to the coup de grace. She said he opened his eyes and looked at them, and that's when Mary Beth squeezed his nose, and Linda said she put a rag in his mouth. Linda put a rag in his mouth? She said Mary Beth held his nose. So Mary Beth held the nose? That's what Linda said. Right. So when, okay, so she said, so what else did she tell you? There's a lot more conversation. It's 30 minutes in total, and then I did another video for two minutes and 50-something seconds, so it's 33 minutes about. I just went around and around with the facts again, not believing it. I was hearing it, and also making sure I had it documented. So I asked her again about why she did it, things like that, of that nature. She said he was going to die. He was dying. He maybe had the best two months to live, the doctor said. He would have got all cut up, and he wouldn't have been able to, you know, breathe on his own, and we just didn't want that. And then I said, I just can't believe, and I said, you murdered your father, and then she said something like, when she said, do you have to say it that way? And I said, yes, I do. And she goes, well, don't say just me, because Mary Beth did it too. She seemed real concerned with making sure I knew it wasn't just her. She wanted Mary Beth to take some of the culpability, but, you know, she basically told on her too. She said, let me ask you this, sorry not to interrupt you, but prior to that, there had been no mention of Mary Beth until that particular moment. No, there wasn't. And then there was. No, she mentioned her the whole time. She did, okay. She said her, my sister and I ended my father's life. Okay. She said that from the very beginning. Okay. But when I said, you murdered your father, she got up in arms and said, well, Mary Beth did it too. Okay. And I said, I just can't believe that would happen. 
I mean, I was just saying, I can't believe that you girls would do this. But when I said that, she gets real confused, Linda does, about what the subject matter is. So when I said, I can't believe that, she thought I meant that Mary Beth participated. At which point she said, you don't understand Mary Beth. She's got a mean streak in her ten times mine. She was furious with my father. They had been fighting, and he had been saying horrible things to her, and she'd been saying horrible things to her, him. And so that, so I, I tried to talk to her about that aspect of it. And I said, so you're saying Mary Beth was angry at your father when she did it, helped you do it. She was not, when you, I said, who suggested the idea? She goes, I don't really know. I said, well, somebody had to say, let's kill dad. I haven't reviewed the tape. Okay. She may have said it, but I don't think she did. I okay. do believe I remember her saying, I can't remember which one. I said, I, I pressed her a little bit. I said, one of you had to say, let's do this. I said, with you being in the medical profession, I would think it would be you and she would agree to it or something. She said, I honestly don't remember. I said, okay, but in either case, she was mad at him, so she had no problem saying, yes, let's kill dad, perfect. And, you know, I, I said that myself to see what she said about it. She goes, yeah, pretty much. She said um, she was mad at him. I said, so Mary Beth did it out of anger. And I tried to play good cop, bad cop myself with her. You know, I said, so you were just trying to euthanize him because you felt really bad for her. But she was mad. I said, that, that, makes, that makes it even more a murder. I said, maybe Mary Beth's even more to blame. You know, I was just trying to see what else she would tell me about it. And she said, um, you know, I don't know. I said, well, but you're saying she was mad at him and she had no problem participating in this and she has a mean streak and they were just arguing and, I, and then I brought up money and I said, this is how you girls inherited the money and was that a motive? And she went, no, definitely not a motive. That's did what they she end said. up, she ended up getting yes, money? Yes, they had money. They how much money did they get? I think Linda said like 500,000. 500? Even though she didn't say that actually it did happen. She though. didn't say, say the amount of money right. that she got from that. Right. But she, at other times, told me she inherited 500000 And okay. I never knew what she meant by it, because I don't care if it's not my money and I, I don't have anything Understood. to do with it. She was just being braggadocious, I think, saying Understood. I inherited 500000 um, And uh, I didn't put two and two together. I assumed it was from the da dad's passing, but I didn't say, oh, wait a minute, you inherited 500000 Was that from your dad's passing? Because mm -hmm. she told me about her dad's passing early on. Right. Again, she told me that she has, has a hard time um, since her, her dad died. And I didn't even know it was four years ago. I thought it was longer. I asked her when this happened. I said, because she was talking. Again, I, I, I'm being a bit circuitous here, and I, I don't remember when things happened right, right. in the conversation. And we'll watch that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, did she give you actual, um, I know the details that she, you told me about, um, she put the rag in his mouth. She stuck did the she, rag in his mouth. Did she tell you where he was, where he was at? I believe she said he was in his bed because they said he was going to bed and asked for a drink okay. and she told her sister or her sister to make the drink up and I don't know who put the house on in the drink but she said six and then she said seven. So toxicology will show that I'm sure. Now let me ask you this, did she at some point, did they all live together, did he live separately or how did that? That I don't know on? but I, I know, I can't say but I know that he had a house in Palm Harbor, and I don't even know where this subdivision is, but she said something like Wexford. I don't know where that is. Right. She said he lived on Wexford or in Wexford. Maybe it's on Wexford Way or in a subdivision called Wexford. Is that familiar? I don't Wexford know. Lease, yes it is. Okay. Is, is that where he lived? I don't even know. Do they, do they, does she still have the house? I don't know. You don't know. She no, does. but he was living there, and from what I can gather from what she said, she was not living there, and neither was Mary Beth, but they came to watch her, watch the father. Okay. Death, okay. death watch. Okay, understood. So they weren't all living together, but they came to visit him, or what happened? To be with, she said she was there 24-7 or something watching him. I think she thought that she was acting as hospice. Okay. And, 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 okay. and if she's acting as hospice and tells me that she's administered fatal doses of morphine to other people in hospice, well then, I really know what she was doing there. Okay. She made so, sure the end came quick, and I don't know if it's for the inheritance, but that's a motive. Understood. So what else did she tell you that you can remember before we watch the video? Um, 
you know, I asked her if she was remorseful. She said every day, but I, I think I asked her if she'd do it again. I don't remember. But yeah, it, there's so much going on. But I just wanted to see really what her state of mind was about it. And uh, she wouldn't allow for the word murder, and she kept saying euthanize. And I kept arguing that point. And um, how did you end the conversation with her? I can't remember. I just said, uh, this is, I was pretty mad. I turned off the camera um, and I put the phone in my pocket and started to make my way at the front door. And, and she said, uh, don't disown me or something like that. And I said, um, you know, she's, she's something about euth euthanasia again. And I turned around and I, I pointed at her uh, from across the room and I said, you don't, she said he was only going to live for a few, couple months. I said, you don't get to decide if your father, what if you wanted to make amends with God and he only had two more hours to live? You'd stuff a rag in his, his, his mouth. You don't know what he wanted to do in those last two hours. And that's really, that's honestly what I thought. Right. When I was walking out of the house, I said, what if this guy didn't, didn't do or say something that he wanted to say in his last two hours, two weeks, two months? So I, was, I literally was mad at her. I really? turned around and I said, you don't get to say what your father does in the last hours or, stop, or make those hours come quicker. He might have wanted to get right with God, and you, you stopped him. You closed his eyes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you can't do that. That's murder. I walked out. She called me almost immediately, and I didn't answer. So when was the last time? So have you talked to her since then? Yeah. And what, what I called back because I knew I had the recording, and I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I, I called back, and she said, um, I said, I see I missed your call. It's about an hour later. And she said, yeah, I, I feel terrible. I'm having flashbacks right now. And I said, well, you should. I said, um, and then I said, we, we should talk about this more. Because I was already in my mind thinking, there's no way I'm going to hear this and not come to you. The people deserve justice. So I was like, so I said, I, we should talk more. And I left it at that. What was her response to that? She said, yeah, but don't ever tell anybody. She goes, I could go to jail. And I said, again, I, you could probably get the death penalty, you might not even be sitting in jail. I don't know right. that. I don't, I don't even know what you do here anymore. Is it, is it still death penalty state? I don't even know. Hmm. Well, it depends on the situation. I guess. I don't know. Right. I don't know. But I'm just saying, I said that to her, and um, uh, she said, well, I would deny it anyway. That's what she said. She said that several times. Um, but um, she said that on the tape, too. She said, if you ever tell anybody, I'll deny it. And um, uh, she said that when I called her back later that afternoon, and uh, she said, I'm scared now. Um, I don't think I should have told you this. But if you ever tell anybody, I'll deny it. She said it again. Why, why would she tell you something like this? I have no idea. I have no idea. Did you have a relationship with her last night? No. Beforehand? No. Was there any alcohol or drugs involved during this conversation that you had in the house? So no, she, she so you're intoxicated or no. drugs or nothing? Just straight the conversation yeah, we're having now. This is as normal as, okay. as can be. Okay. I've never actually seen her drink. She said, and I've been around her quite a bit, she said that she had, this was last year, She when she apologized for some, some really weird errant texting, um, strange things that, that, that weren't even germane to any conversations we ever had. She apologized the next day, saying, I had my Ambien, and I, I may have had a drink. She okay. said may have had a drink like she doesn't drink often, right. so I wouldn't put too much stock That's in That's not been your experience. I've seen never her. seen her drink. Okay. Not so, one drink of alcohol. All right. And I've never seen her take Ambien. In fact, uh, there was a point where she told me she stopped taking Ambien, and that was a couple months ago. Okay. And she said she had trouble sleeping. And during this conversation, or right after at some point maybe it might not be on the recording but she said I stopped uh, she said uh, she said something like that's why why do you think I was medicating myself at night I can't get through the night she did actually she told me she has a nightmares that her father standing at the foot of the bed good she should have those nightmares right. when did she tell you that last night uh, yeah, it was either right before um, I started the tape or on the phone call I just I'm sorry I just can't remember okay. a, lot sure. of that, a lot of that um, is is there a way we can try to... Well, I can try to get... Do you, do you have a thumb drive? I can get a thumb drive, yes, sir. I have a question, and I only say this because it bears in this conversation. When you stop seeing her or having relations with her, 
was this kind of a mutual thing? Or is she okay with it? Or she's upset about it? Or uh, uh, it's, it's only because it's going to be relevant, not right now, but at some point it may be relevant. She's no, it's, it's mutual. We we, we just stops. We, we okay. don't, sometimes we don't talk for weeks, and then she would call me up and say she wanted to see me or whatever. And right. She's not going to tell us later on that, that you have an active line with her or anything like that at all. Who knows what she's going to say? I am saying, but it won't be truthful. So we're trying to vet that out at this time. You see what I'm saying? But if you're talking about next to grind. How would I make her say stuff I never heard I understand. Of in my life? We're just trying to go through all this yeah, stuff. Trying to, That's all I'm trying to tell you. Whether I had an axe to grind or not, it, her to admit. Murder to me doesn't seem like a likely scenario to get even with me or to. No, I understand that, but I'm just trying to tell you. We just have to. We have to walk through all these scenarios, is what I'm trying to tell you. Like, are you upset with her? Or no, I'm not. I'm not upset. I mean, yeah, I mean, she 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 ticks me off quite a bit with her the crazy texting, but not enough to. It's not. Okay. Like, I have no motive to make up a story about something I never heard of in my life before. I understand that. I'm just saying we're, we just kind of bet all this out and just make sure that, you know, yeah, it's the ones where she's got a, you got an axe story with her, she's got one to grind with you, and then one's made up later on. We're trying to find if there was. We need to know about it. If there's not, that's I fine. know that Mary Beth does not like me because of the, my transferring affections to the sister, so... Um, so she wasn't happy about this, obviously. So you, do you have any... Contact with her at all, or you pretty much do not have contact with the we other sister. We don't really talk. I mean, last time I was at the house, I saw her, but um, okay, she doesn't. She doesn't really talk to me. Okay, um, but I just honestly, you know, I'll answer any questions you have. But Certainly. I honestly don't. I would not understand why anybody would think that. Any relationship I had with her or her sister bears upon her confession of something that I have no idea no, what transpired. See, what he was trying to tell you is that we have to vet everything out. Mm -hmm. okay? um, anything if there's, uh, you know, that can they can try to attack or or not. Whether you oh he's making this up because. Um, Whatever I'm, the, I don't want. I'm, he's right. upset with me. I didn't get the job that he wanted, or I'm not paying him for this. Right. So, so I would make her confess to I, murder. I'm just right. I'm just, just, I, I understand that, but you haven't been in this position before. Where do we yeah. have to find out? Do we have to defend anything that's going on? As far right. as well, especially because of the relationship. You have a relationship with her and a relationship with her sister. Right. If you think that later on that that won't be an issue, I'm telling you it's going to be. Yeah. So we're trying to vet that out right now to make sure... Do the best no you can. Ask no, anything I, you want. I get that, but I'm saying that's why I told you. We're only asking about this to the point of having to know because later on I'm looking down the road that somebody's going to use this as, yeah. a, as a tool. Okay? And I Not you. yourself. It could be. That's what I'm trying to say. If there was something to be known, I'd rather know about it up front and we'll deal with it. Right. I don't want to find out about it five months from now. Do you understand yeah, that? There's nothing I can tell you other than okay. we had a relationship. Um, right. We've 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 had uh, you know it, it, it's it's been up and down. Sure. But it has it none of it had anything to do with this. That's all I can say. Perfect. No, that's fine. That's Perfect. what. That's all I was asking. That was all that question was about. Okay. Trying to get the password to this. So you said that uh, she, she she's going to expect you to. You guys left it off that you would come by and talk to her today, correct? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what she's. She's actually texting me now. And what she said. Uh, something about an, she went to meet with her attorney. Uh, she went to a phone meeting, and signed papers at 9 a.m. tomorrow, and oh, for the house. Yes. That you're telling me, I guess they close tomorrow. Yeah, she said they close tomorrow. But she knew yesterday that you were going to stop by. You're going to have a meeting today yeah. at some point. Okay, so that's not unusual. No, that has already been discussed. Okay. Yeah, I, I did that because I knew there was no way I was going to be able to sit with this um, uh, I, I knew I knew almost immediately there's I can't I couldn't have that information and hold it like she's holding it. Right. Because he's not my father. 
But it would weigh heavy on my mind. Understood. I just lost my mom on June 8th, and I mean, we're talking patricide. No, I understand. That's huge. Like I said, it may bother her. It obviously bothers you, and it only bothers her maybe when she's talking about it. So everybody's built differently. Right. That's what I'm saying, though. Right. I just don't know what she's thinking. I'm going to try to open up iTunes on this and get that file. He's taking a call. Yeah, I think so, yeah. He'll be right back in. He'll get this transferred over or whatever we need to do. It's chilling to me, even though she's a meek lady, very meek. So you were pretty shocked over that when that came up. I'm sure you were thinking something else was going to be said, which makes sense. I thought she was going to say she was molested. Right. And when that came out, then you were probably shocked. Yeah, I was shocked. I couldn't believe I was being confessed to murder. Because not once did I think, oh, he was old and dying. Yeah, I get it. Not once. That didn't cross my mind. As soon as she said it, I'm like, he murdered your father. Right. Stop right there. This is bad. Right. This can only get worse. Right. So I was like, how do I close this? Let me see. You mentioned that Linda's a nurse. Has she ever talked about where she works at or did work at? She worked for somebody called Dr. Mazur or Mazur or something, she told me. I don't know who he is. Did she ever mention hospice before this conversation? No. That's where she worked? No. She never mentioned that. Well, we appreciate you coming in and telling us this, obviously. Yeah, I... I I just... I hope it's... I just hope it's the right thing as far as you can do something about it. I would hate to think that I um, came forward with this and then you're just like, well, it's it's four years old, he's cremated, he can't do anything. (laughs) No. I work in very old cases, so I'm just saying that that's four years is not that long. Okay, so. a four-year-old case with a confession. I mean, you, again, you can't promise anything, but is that is that something that is prosecutable? Is a confession? I mean, I'm just wondering if a confession, either this or if I get anything else for you, is that prosecuted? Is that something that's? It can be, but there's a lot of aspects of this that we have to look we at. We have to do a lot of work before you know, or so forth. So we're just let's. I want to see, let's see the video and then we'll go do that. We'll try to maybe uh, have you go talk to her. Okay. We'll do that. Um, if you're willing to do that, I'm willing to do it. Okay, we appreciate that. I can't. I won't be able to live with it if I don't. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to attempt to drag these files on the desktop. Then I'm going to attempt to drag it on that so you have them. Correct. Uh, so let me see. I just need to know how to do that. All you gotta do is copy it, put it on, like you said, on the desktop, and we can, it's really easy. Just yeah, I wanna um, find the, um, the, the the photos. I wanna look at it uh, as a. Um,
You don't have to sync it to it. You can without iTunes. Yeah. You you know how to do that. I right? think. Okay. Yeah. Can I? I don't, I'm not going to look at anything because yeah, I'm can, an iPhone you, guy. You are? Yes. Sir. Oh, here you go. All right. So, what you, you can do? Without iTunes? Yeah. So you it's connected to the phone. The phone is recognized. Okay. Because now you're going to end up syncing all this. Oh, we don't want that. you to do that. So we can close iTunes. Then. Yeah. Let me. Just so we can close it, right? But the phone is recognized and connected. We can go look into it as a hard drive. Yes. That's what I'm Come down here. Oh, I just don't have a Mac computer. Hold on. Where's the files? Transferring. If, if you like, okay, I can do it on mine here because I have a window, I got a Windows base, okay. and I, you can watch me. And yeah, I, I'll and do I it. Do, yes, sir. And that's, and I can connect to this. Connect your iPhone can, to the computer. If the autoplay window appears, click import pictures and videos using Windows to click the import settings. All right. But we can try it. Because I don't have a Mac computer. Let's try that. Do it here? Yeah, let's try it. Let's see uh, the USB. What kind of card is Linda on? She just, she's got a, um, uh, she has a brand new Hyundai 2018. They'll say trust. For now. Yeah. All right, then let me see it. I'm going to look in the hard drive and I'll give you the two files that you need. Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll go here. This, uh, right here. Okay, let me see that. If we click on here. Yeah, I know how to do it from there. I'm going to minimize this a little bit, though. So I can see the deck to desktop. Then I'm going to look in here. So I am. Should be videos. Possibly. Is there a video? No. No, just click on those. The, usually it has a file in the photos. Uh, well, well, just double click on that. I'll try that. See. Yeah. I'm going to look for them. Give me a second. Might not be able to find it immediately, but these are images, not videos. Okay, I'll go to the next one. Each file. Yeah, eventually we'll find out. Images, uh, video, it's going to be MOV file. It's not there. Images, video.
last one. Tells you dates there too. things that we have to do on the back end and that I can't understand that. I can't disclose all that. Well no, this is just like we're right. talking. So I mentioned a bar I'm like, hey can you solve yeah. all the murders yeah. and someone confesses, is that enough? Or do you have to have a corpus delecti or whatever? You know what I mean? Like go just, ahead and send the other one. I'm just asking. Mm -hmm. 
This is the second one. Okay. I'm just asking as out of curiosity, have have you done that before? Have you solved old murder with a confession? Is that enough or do you need more evidence? Um, you can't do it with a confession. Like you said, there's a lot of work to be done, so it's very um, early involved in this process mm -hmm. where we can say that. Your plug. Your USB plug. This one? To plug into my to my phone. You mean this uh, USB plug? This yeah. one. Thanks. Uh -huh. You got them both? Yes, sir. That was quick thinking. She's saying to say my window's closing for coming. Hmm? She's trying to say. Tell her you'll be over there. Tell her you're, we'll, uh, we'll get this set up. Let me, um, listen, yeah, let's, did you find it? I'm working on it. Hello? It is. How's it going, man? Uh, yeah, we, the, uh, no, the, nothing else besides the painting on the tips and stuff that we took to the shop. Like I told you, I promised you, I promised you that. What are you talking about? You're talking about the 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 uh, primer that was already on there since the beginning. Yeah. Well, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't do anything in the hangar. We talked. I didn't do anything else. Nothing at all. That's why the fuselage is still like that. It's going to Foster's tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I promised you. Yeah, no, nothing's going on, and I, I didn't do that. So I, I told you that I wouldn't. That's why I left the fuselage alone. Yeah. If it looks like we're losing our window, ten twenty-three on this, and spool that. Yeah. If we are, I don't know. But he's on the phone. Yeah. Are you we'll with me on that? Because yeah. I don't know. Yeah, just send. I'll get with. Uh, no, I'm not doing anything in there. It's going yeah, to the Foster's. Just getting yeah. painted. We did nothing else. We, get, we didn't even do any sanding after. And then I took um, the wing tips and things, parts to the guy's shop. The shop to window paint, is uh, to paint the uh, tips and the things that went back on. He painted over the shop and clear water. So yep, I promised you that, and I, I stuck to that. Okay. Yeah, tell him to calm down. It's fine. Nothing happened. Nothing's gonna happen. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Jeez. Your painter? Oh no no, there's painting. Uh, there's the guy who I have an airplane in the hangar, and he's, um, he's complaining about people been painting inside the hangar. Oh, with the <laughs> overspray and stuff. Gotcha, like that. gotcha. Okay, what's he doing? He's stepping out real quick. Let's find out. I don't know if he got on there or not. I don't know if he got on his phone or the the, the desktop. I don't know. Um, Has Linda texted you about meeting with you? Yeah, right now she's trying to say that the window's closing, so I gotta hurry up and go over there. Okay. I don't need long. She'll 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 talk to me. Okay. Do you have something to to record? Yeah, we're we're, we're working on that right now. So even though we wanted to see this video, we may forego that for right now. We don't want to miss the window of that, so that's what we're trying to say. Yeah, yeah. If she says that, we want to kind of... I'll come back later. You oh, just want to watch the video on your own anyway. Right, that's fine. That's what I'm saying. That's why it's not as important to, to watch it now, so that's yeah. fine. Um, it's scary stuff. It sounds like it. These two girls did it. To me, it is. I mean, you know, you, if you've been on the job, you've seen probably a lot, lot worse stuff than that. People, you, your head's blown off. Who knows? And what kind mm -hmm. of homicides you've investigated? I don't know how long you've been doing this. What you've long seen. Long time. I don't know what you've seen that's, that's scary to look at, but this, this to me, this is scary. It's just chilling for someone to 
you know, pinch their father's nose until he stops breathing. Right. I just... What does this other sister do for a living? She works down here at a medical records billing place by the... You know where you pay your taxes in Clearwater? Yeah. On the Olive Garden or something? Yeah, right on 19. I know where that is, yeah. Okay. I know you haven't said anything to her yet, but being back to Linda, the agreement was just to meet back at her house and talk and then whatever. Okay, got it. Did you give the detective the address where you were going to be meeting her at? Yes. You did all that? Okay, good. Let me ask you this. If you were to tell her, meaning Linda, that you don't believe her about this, what do you think her reaction would be to that? Yes, I realize your father's really dead. I get that. What I'm saying is we're trying to figure out, you know, was there anything that was, you know, anything else? Did she keep any of this stuff? It would be extremely odd. No, she has nothing she would have, but, I mean, I could ask. I just don't think. It would be extremely odd for somebody to do that, and I'm trying to say, no, I want you to just come out and ask for that because it would be extremely obvious what was going on, so we don't want that, but I just don't know what her reaction to some of this would be. If you were to say, well, I don't, you know, this sounds very outlandish, you know. Did you keep the rag? Did you? Yeah, but if you say that, she's going to be all, this should be really flustered about that. She's really naive, extremely. Like, she just says things. I mean, she told me that her sister already asked her if she told me this. Who do you think that was? Was this yesterday or? No, she says, she said it yesterday. She said, Mary Beth has already asked me if I've told, she said, that Mary Beth said, did you tell him about Dad? And then she told Mary Beth, no, I did not tell him about Dad. I didn't ask when that was, but I don't assume. It had to be, right, very recently, of course, because it just happened, right? No, it was before this. I mean, because she was confessing to me yesterday. Okay. And then she said, Mary Beth's already asked me if I've told you about this. Okay, I'm with you now. I totally get you. So, in other words, Mary Beth's already suspicious that since we talk... That maybe that had come up and she had mentioned it. Yeah, and she, and she told her she did not. No, she Although, she did not. that would have been true in the past because she had not, but up yesterday, yeah, obviously. Now, yeah, now, it's, now okay. it's true. Got it, got it. Um, but Mary Beth's worried about it, too. Any these people been in trouble before, you know? Not that I know of. I would doubt it. Um, from what I know about them, that they have any record of any sort. Okay. I mean, but who knows? I mean, you I don't know, know. right? I'm sitting next to a murderer, and I didn't know that either. That's what I'm saying. So you may not know that. I'm just saying something you may have said. No, nothing you would investigate. I'm just saying no. something you would have just, you know, heard off the cuff or anything like that. I mean, all. possibly DUI for Mary Beth because she drinks a lot. She's a heavy drinker. Okay. Very heavy. I've I've followed her home drunk. I've watched her drink seven or eight drinks. Followed her home. I videotaped her drunk driving episode from behind and sent it to her. Right, said, so you're really bad, we shouldn't be, right? Yeah, I said you're really bad. And uh, I, she uh, she was at my show and I was packing up and she left, she went to the valet and got her car and she left before me, right right before me. And um, because I told her to wait and I would drive her home and she, she went to the valet anyway. Like I was packing up my gear, she went to the valet, got the car and I saw her leaving. And I, I got my car, uh, the valet gave, you know, gave me the keys and everything. I got packed up and I got my car right behind her. I went down the road and I followed her and she was swerving. Uh, any any cop would have stopped her. Any, any. Right. It wouldn't even have been a question. And I sent her the video and I continued home. Right. And I said, look at yourself. Yeah, you're in a bad way. Understood. You shouldn't do that. And um, then, of course, she said... I had one drink, but I didn't eat anything. That's what they always say. Right. <laughs> but you know she had more than that. So. Oh, I watched her. Right. I watched her. And um, they always say that, though. I didn't eat. Okay, well, all right. Well, if you didn't eat, then and you know that that alcohol affects you like that, then why drink? 
Correct. Maybe you should eat and then drink, or maybe don't drink at all. Right. <laughs> and eat. Just eat. <laughs> well, whichever you do, but I mean, it's right. always the case. They always say they had one drink or two drinks. Never five, six, seven. They That's never, correct. They never say it. That's right. It's funny, though, when you watch them or you see them pay a tab of $100, and they're like, I had one drink. I didn't even finish it. Right. I'm like, why do you say that? Well, right, when you know that didn't happen. Right, that's nobody's correct. Nobody's dumb. Nobody's dumb. We see you getting drunk. Okay, where is he? Because we really, I really, I really should go. Let me text him real quick. I don't know if he's revealing the, the tape with your son. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I just said we're... Uh, You're going to have me go over there. I need to go soon. And I also have some things to do. Hey, we need to get up and run with this like real fast. So can we? I know, but I'm telling you. We're, we okay, so we're waiting for that time. Okay, that's fine. All right, cool. Okay, cool. Okay, bye. All right, we're getting equipment. That's what's going on. That's where he's at. So, so okay. All right, so we're missing our window of time here. So, we appreciate your patience. We'll get this moving along and get you on your way here for whatever you're doing. Just, just look at this. Look at a little of this. Here, you can say where you're at. Oh, okay.
halcyons in the alcohol. If somebody talked to me like that, I would stop right there and say you're recording me. She fills the whole thing up with soda and all this other stuff. Right, made like a real drink. Yeah, and she hands it to him. So he took enough to knock him for a loop, really knock him for a loop. This is very hard for me. I know. I've never told anybody this. I guess not. And obviously, I would deny it if you ever told anybody. Why would I tell somebody? What good is it going to do? You said the body's cremated. Yes, it's cremated. Your father's cremated. We've already been through an investigation. The police were there. Who investigated? The police were there. The police of where? Well, so let me tell you. He lay down on the couch. Wait, this was seven years ago? Four. Four years ago? Yeah. There he goes on the couch. You killed your father four years ago. Do you have to say it like that? Well, but that's... And don't just say it to me because it was my sister, too. Say it. And Mary Beth. Correct. We euthanized him. We didn't kill him. Well, euthanasia is not legal. Well, it is because hospice does it all the time. They give you the lethal dose of morphine. I've seen it. I've done it myself. So you think that if you take it upon yourself that your father is suffering and no medical, but he didn't, he was at home, he wasn't taken to the hospital, you think it, it's upon yourself, look, I'm not trying to give you a hard time, but did you really think it was upon yourself to decide whether he should be euthanized? I mean, they, I mean, they arrested that Jack Kevorkian he guy. He didn't want to go to the place that he, we, this beautiful place that he was going to go live in. Have his own little apartment. He didn't want to go. He didn't oh, so he was to also to go live in a beautiful apartment. But yet he was dying since the doctor. The beginning of this, if he asked for euthanasia, they didn't want to spend the money on the apartment. They wanted to stop it right there well, and get the insurance. Well, he had a DNR, but he didn't ask. You don't ask for euthanasia. Well, you do if you want it. That's why they bring in that Jack of working guy to help them. But what I'm trying to say is, the very first thing I asked you when this conversation started is like, you euthanized your father. You said yes. And I said, did he ask for euthanasia? And you said, no. That, we, we made the decision, okay? Right, you made the decision. You and Mary Beth made the decision. Yes. Your sister and you decided that euthanasia was the best thing for him. Yes, because medically wise, I knew with, with a big giant mass in the swamp that he had maybe months to live. Yes, months. And he, he had lost his mind. That's good, months more. Thank you. I'll take it. Maybe it was wrong. Why do you think I battle every day with it? So anyway, he went to sleep. Okay. We thought he was... Dead? Dead. And? He was He opened his eyes. He opened his eyes? He looked at us. He looked at you. And I said, now what do we do? You asked her now what to do? I said, what do we do now? Listen to this. To them. I don't know if I can even tell her. You put a pillow over his face. Yeah, we actually did. Not a pillow, but we did. And screaming, yes. By pinching his nose? Did you pinch your father's nose? How did you do it? I don't, can't talk. Anymore. What do you mean you can't talk? You already told me. This is the only way to get it off your chest. You've never told anybody. You might as well finish so I know, and you know, that the truth has been told. Did you pinch his nose and hold his mouth? I mean, that's very personal. That's probably why you're having problems right now, mental problems. Which you do, by the way. You realize you can't tell a therapist this, right? No, I can't tell a therapist and you can't tell anybody. You can't tell anybody. She knows. Well, anyway, there's no proof of it. He's cremated, he's gone, he's ashes, there's no evidence. There's evidence if you admitted it to, to, if you walked into the police and admitted you did that, there would be evidence. What if she does? What if she, she goes crazy? Your sister, Mary Beth, is crazy. What if she goes crazy one day and walks in and admits it? I just deny it. You would just deny it. And you, you think that... stand there and admit that I killed my father? There you go. Not me, but we did. pinched his nose. She did. And did you hold his mouth? I put a washcloth in it. You put a washcloth in his mouth? 
How can you live with yourself? It's hard, Anthony. It's very hard. But he was he was alive and you ended his life. I know I did. Did you did. did you guys discuss money before you did this? How well you could inherit? No. It had nothing to do with money? Nothing to do with money. It had to Are do you with sure? what we were living with. What we saw and the doctor just told me your father has a massive cancerous his whole lung is full of cancer. He may have two months left to live. But what but there's been miracles in the past. Okay, so what do you want me to do now? Go confess to the police? I didn't say to do that. Only you know what will set you free. Nothing will set me free. You can't decide that the miracle of modern medicine couldn't have saved him and cleared his cancer out. Never. You, Never in a million years. You can't decide that. The People, doctor said it. He told me Fuck the doctor. He's dying. But he's not dead. You can't end his life. You know this. You know you can't end a life. You know it's murder. Yes, I do. That's murder. You, I, I, look at you, little innocent you. You've actually murdered a person in this world. And your own father to boot. I've never murdered a person. I'm dangerous. I'm a dangerous individual. People start fights with me, and I, I don't just wrestle with them. I pound them into oblivion. And I've never murdered anybody. I can't believe it. I've even wanted to in the past. I've even so thought. So then why do you think now what are you going to do? What do you mean? Then I told you. I'm just, I can't believe that you, you murdered. Not me. Me and my sister. Well, I can't you believe that you. Don't just on me. We made the decision together as a pack. She's a dumbass. You're the ringleader. You know that. The first person to think, let's just euthanize him was you. You know that. And no, she agreed. No, wasn't. And she agreed. No, that's not true. Oh, you both said it at the same time. We you went actually, one, we two, did. three, let's euthanize. We both decided at the same time because actually, you don't know. I'm going to put this on possible and sit here. I'm just hanging for a second. Mm -hmm. Hang tight, buddy. We're waiting on a couple people to get here, okay? She's, um, I know. She's, she's texting me that, that her window's closing. And, you know, if we play this right, we might be able to talk to Mary Beth. I okay. Be able to talk well, to her and Mary Beth walking from work, and I might be able to spring it on her. I think that's the best way. Mary Beth's a loose cannon. But if she walks in and says, what the hell is he doing here? I might say, she just told me about that. And she might go, oh. Right. You know what we'll, I mean? We'll work it out. Let's, I got a couple, we got uh, some things coming over here. And we're gonna oh, thanks. Tell me. Just tell me. I know. On. We're going to get the, 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 the devices and stuff like that. Okay. Hang tight here. Or do you... Uh, I don't feel like sitting in there anymore. Okay. Do you want to do an interview with me? We don't need the recorder or anything. Thank you all for watching, everybody. And until next time, take care.